talking on about football or politics, it was everything fine. So <laughs> I will show some of the results we got. Okay, uh, first of all, a small overview about the general properties of the Milky Way. One of the first important things that was um, recomputed using the, the Gaia data is the total mass of the Milky Way, basically using the, the globular clusters, the, the, the motions of the globular clusters. And the results that, uh, we, uh, that were, were the people got, basically, is that uh, we are in this very inconvenient range of masses in between 0 0.5, 10 to the 12, and, and several times 10 to the 12. And why is it is inconvenient? Well, basically because uh, we know that galaxies at around that mass is in where they generate this virial shock that change completely the, the properties of the halo and also have a, have a strong influence on the disk. So um, this makes things more complicated and also more fun to, to, to do some research. Also another important property uh, uh, that we have found uh, within, the, within the disk is basically um, we have that uh, there is this thin disk and this thick disk uh, that you can split them very well when you look at the, at the chemi uh, chemistry space. You can see here basically um, the thin disk is this one uh, with the lower alpha versus iron uh, um, properties and uh, the thick disk is uh, with a higher alpha versus iron. Also the thick disk is, uh, has lower iron elements and the thin disk has a higher iron, iron elements. So this is something that uh, also with Gaia we are uh, seeing now and probably it would be much better defined it in the Gaia DR3 in 2021. And finally another global property is the current uh, star formation rate. Uh, these values you can see here were obtained in 2010, but we now with our work and also some new works in the last, uh, that, that were published in the last month, we are recovering values uh, very similar to these ones. That is in, in this range between one and two uh, solar masses per year. This means that the galaxy is uh, quite quenched, not completely. Uh, and what we don't know is if the Milky Way is just going back to the, to the, block, the blue cloud after a previous quench. We will see some results about that uh, in, in the next slides. Maybe we are just in the middle of the Green Valley, or maybe we are already leaving the Green Valley to the red sequence. Uh, this is something also to, that will be very interesting to do some research in the, in the next future. Regarding uh, some results about the, about the thin and the thick disk, uh, several years ago with the Apogee data, it was already uh, um, presented that uh, there was a quenching phase in between 8 and 10 giga years ago in the Milky Way, a very clear one. Uh, the galaxy almost died in the star formation. So um, this was seen with the Apogee data. And after that, uh, with uh, Amina Helmi, with Gaia DR2 data, they found that just very compatible with this quenching event, just before the quenching event, there was this uh, retrograde merger with the Gaia and Celados or the Sosage. Um, that they saw it uh, basically both in the in the kinematics space. You can see here how the, it is. Uh, it, it has a retrograde velocities. All the blue stars are the ones from the from the Gaia Enceladus. Uh, also in the in the in the chemical space, you can you can say you can see very well also the the Gaia Enceladus here. Uh, that is somehow a continuation of the thin disk. This is something interesting that I will go back again in, the, in, in some of the next slides. And they also, after fitting some isochrons, they have seen that basically all these stars are, were born in between 10 and 13 uh, giga years uh, ago. So uh, the big question here is the quenching that was seen from Apogee data and confirmed recently was just a direct consequence of this merger of Gaia and Celadus. Maybe some models um, show that after, well, I, I, something that is quite uh, clear, that after a merger, you have uh, compressions in the disk, you have a lot of perturbations, then the, you enhance the star formation. This star formation consumes most of the gas and also expels some of the gas to the CGM, gas that maybe at some point later on will go back slightly, slowly to the disk to uh, keep star formation in a low rate, but not completely uh, extinct. So maybe, maybe uh, this merger can be the, the, the mechanism for the, for the quenching that was observed. Uh, nonetheless, there are other possible um, explanations to, to the quenching. We also know there is also some models that explain that after this merger from Gaia Enceladus, basically we had an old thin disk um, that was heated up to, to be converted in the present uh, thick disk 
this was by this measure of the guy Enceladus. And also with this measure, we had a lot of perturbations that, in, uh, that triggered the formation of the old bar, of the old bar of the Milky Way that has a similar age also. Uh, the formation of an uh, uh, old bar also means that a new mechanism for quenching can start acting, that is basically the bar quenching. And, however, uh, some works, for example, Nogueira Cavalgante presented this work uh, uh, in 2018, in where they show that maybe the bar quenching is only affecting the very central regions of the, of the disk, and you need an extra mechanism to uh, quench the entire disk. So maybe a combination of both, bar quenching and also uh, the, star formation, the, 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 the star formation burst uh, triggered by the, by the measure are the ones that are driving the quenching that, uh, that was found. Also another possibility, but of course the, the supermassive black holes of the, the Milky Way is very, very small, could be the activation of the, the central AGN, but it would be a very local and very uh, short-lasted uh, um, quenching probably for, for, the, for the Milky Way. Another possible uh, mechanism for the quenching would be the, the creation of a video shock if the Milky Way had uh, enough mass. Uh, we need that the mass of the galaxy uh, is about this several times 10 to 11, almost 10 to the 12, or in stellar masses uh, at about 10 to 11, to have the production of the video shock and um, the, um, this uh, video shock starvation. But we know uh, that probably this is not the case, that the galaxy is uh, much less uh, uh, massive. Uh, first of all, if we go to the theoretical models, we can see basically, first of all, from this one, from Liu uh, 2014, that uh, the mass of the Milky Way at achieved 1.5, that is when the, the Gaia Enceladus measure occurred, uh, would be in between 1 to, th to times 10 to the 9 to 1 times 10 to the 12. Then this is compatible with the, with the video shock, but if you go to most recent uh, results from also uh, analytical models, you see that basically we are going, uh, we are having two less uh, uh, mass for the video shock production. Also, this is consistent with observations. Also, from the same paper from Helmi, they derived it, the, the mass of the disk before the interaction, also the mass from Enceladus, and the mass of the disk after interaction, that is this 1 to 2 times 10 to the 10. So it's too low for the generation of video shock. So this mechanism cannot be one, one of the ones that triggered the, the quenching of the at, about 10, 10 years ago. So we are doing now some research with uh, uh, cosmological simulations with high resolution in the, in the CGM to try to see which one of these mechanisms or which combination is uh, producing, uh, can produce a similar uh, quenching as the one observed. But well, uh, the important part, the results we obtained in collaboration uh, with the people in Barcelona are about what happens next after this quenching event. Basically, we know that from cosmology, uh, we expect that the gas in, in, a, in a cosmological context is basically consumed after the peak uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the star formation in the, in the universe at about redshift 2. Also, from these models, analytical models, we see that for galaxies like the, the ones with the mass of the Milky Way, you have a decreasing star formation rate up to the present. Also, for, most for, for the most recent models, you can also see that uh, we are getting a uh, star formation rate that is decreasing. Uh, also, if we think that uh, we had this measure at, at about 10 giga years ago, we would expect a decreasing star formation rate after the gas that was heated up to the CGM cools down back again to the disk. We have that the, the, the star formation rate is not completely going to zero, but still kept uh, or constant or slightly decreasing. So maybe this is what we would expect for the Milky Way, but it's not exactly the case. Uh, what, what we have seen, basically, from the Gaia and DR2 observations, after applying uh, Bayesian computations, we uh, used the Besançon Galaxy model from the Robin et al. Uh, 2003. We did several realizations. We compared it with, uh, with uh, Gaia data, and what we obtained, basically, is uh, the diagram. In the diagram, if we assume that we have the uh, Gaia and Cellulose merger at here, at about uh, 10 to 11 um, years ago, uh, we, have, we are seeing here, again, recovering the quenching post-merger, very clear. What we would expect after this quenching post-merger would be, from cosmology and from analytical models, something like flat or slightly decreasing for the star formation uh, rate, but we have found this very clear peak on a star formation. And this one, okay, thank you. This one followed by a new quenching episode, much stronger than the one than the previous one. So, after finding that, uh, 
that is basically some of the properties of the, this star formation peak is that it's very long lasted. Uh, look, that is something about three giga years, four giga years uh, lasted, so it's very long lasted. Um, to, to be able to produce that in a disk uh, like the one on the Milky Way, we need a very massive uh, new gas supply. This will be kind of a rejuvenation of the Milky Way in these last uh, uh, giga years. We know uh, integrating uh, the amount, uh, well, the, the star formation rate uh, uh, over the time that was the, this uh, star formation enhanced, that this generated about the 50% of the Milky Way uh, um, disk was formed in this event. And that this new, uh, this event was followed by, by this very strong uh, uh, quenching. So all these properties, we need to uh, have some model or to try to think in some model to, uh, um, to uh, explain the origin of it. Okay, um, for the origin, well, several things. It has a high dependence on the Milky Way mass. Basically, if the Milky Way in the, at the current time was extremely massive, uh, we would expect that the BBR shock was uh, already formed, so uh, the, the, the CGM was very hot, we have no more aggression, so the only way to produce uh, um, this peak could be something related with uh, what was presented by Birboim uh, 2007, that is called the, this, the Samba process, that is this process in where you have the BDL shock, the, BDL, the first stage of the BDL shock basically is the, 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 the BDL shock uh, going all, around, all along the disk and making a first strong infall uh, of gas to the disk that would produce this, uh, this burst before the quenching uh, uh, due, to the, to, due to the BDL shock presence. This would happen if the Milky Way was very massive at redshift zero. This is probably not the case. A second case could be that the video shock is just starting now, what means that now is the moment in, where, uh, in when we have no more gas supply, so we would expect a quenching now. That is something we are observing, in fact. Uh, and the peak would be before the video shock creation and could be, for example, uh, cooling gas from the CGM, but adding some new low metallicity, uh, low metallicity gas in falling from the IGM, maybe uh, just in falling through the, the, through the cosmic uh, uh, filaments, or maybe due to the new massive gas uh, ridge merger. Okay? And, uh, and the last uh, possibility would be that the Milky Way is much less massive than 10 to the 12, then uh, everything is related with being in the, in the cooling flow regime. So uh, only a possible gas, new gas uh, ridge merger, merger could, could explain the, the, the peak of a star formation we, 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 we see, but would not explain the next, the, 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 the consequent uh, uh, quenching we are also observing. So we prefer this, uh, this uh, scenario, although we are studying all of them, uh, basically uh, on simulations and also uh, uh, doing some theoretical models. Um, something else, um, basically uh, focusing on the, on the scenario of a gas ridge merger, um, from models on isolated, uh, of isolated galaxies, we see that a merger of a, a gas, uh, gas ridge merger produces this very clear peak on a star formation, followed by this uh, slow quenching on the star formation. But this peak is very short time, uh, very, uh, it happens in a very short time. What we uh, propose and what we are studying is that uh, this cannot be used to predict what would happen in a Milky Way realistic model in where you have uh, this hot CGM developed and that uh, you, are, you, are, you have this uh, measure, this uh, galaxy that is merging uh, plenty of gas that uh, has the gas stripped and added to the CGM and that uh, the next times will be cooled down and will replenish the disk in a more sure, in, in a more um, quiet way than if it, it falls directly to the disk. So maybe uh, this is really a, a gas ridge merger, but uh, due to the presence of this hot CGM and also uh, um, the stripping of the gas uh, takes much longer than the one we observe from, from, the, from the models in isolated uh, disks. Um, also, this can be this, uh, this, um, this cooling of the gas from the CGM. We are also studying this, this kind of uh, scenario. Uh, we are doing the simulations. We are doing the simulations that uh, um, uh, with high resolution in the CGM, also following uh, new approaches for the, for the refinement strategies, both using ART and Ramses. This is work in progress. Um, also studying the, the, the chemistry space, you can see this is basically, you see the thin, the thin disk here and the thick disk 
sorry, the thick disk here and the thin disk below. And you see that the, for the thin disk, there are some stars that are as metal poor as the ones for the, for the, um, th the thick disk. Then maybe this can be a key to understand the formation of this uh, uh, thin disk. Also, you can see that this thin disk stars are kind of a continuation of the Gaia Enceladus event. We are also studying that. Maybe is related the formation of the thin disk and this bump on the star formation is related with the old uh, Gaia Enceladus merger. And the last thing, just to finish, uh, a very recent work by Isair in 2019 with a very different approach using massive white dwarfs. They found, again, this recent peak on the star formation here. But they found uh, something else that is a very, very recent peak on the star formation at almost present that uh, we suspect that is the origin of, this one is the, the one we already found, and this one we think that is the origin of the new bar, the, one, the secular bar of the Milky Way. Also, the current day spiral arms are probably generated by, by this new event that they found and also related with the very kinematically perturbed disk uh, published in the Antoja et al. in the Nature paper this year. And I leave you here with the conclusions. Just the important part, basically, um, we know the Milky Way is very highly perturbed in the, basically in the ten, last uh, 10 giga years. Also, we are working in different interpretations to uh, know why we have this very strong episode of a star formation in the Milky Way. It will have a very important consequences on the CGM. So CGM observations will have uh, something to say also to that scenario, to understand that scenario. And finally, to just encourage you to go for Gaia DR2 data because it is free and there is a lot of information there uh, to understand galaxy formation and evolution uh, theories. So thank you a lot. For the, yeah, it's, it's one of the, others, uh, the other planes we are trying to analyze. Yes, the kinematics, obviously. But basically what, hap what happens with kinematics is, is that uh, uh, to, to try to distinguish between the events that uh, drive to the, uh, to the formation of this peak of star formation, it's six giga years ago. So the disk is very well mixed. It's not clear how we can... Uh, yeah, but that, uh, path, if we, the, the path of disk, that is the, the thick disk, was generated in the Gaia Enceladus event, probably. The other ones, basically, uh, in the scenarios I am putting here, basically, uh, you have the gas that cools down to the disk, settles in the disk, and then starts forming stars. So the disk will be very thin. But yeah, I, I understand that. But, you know, we still have stars that are like 18 years old. Yeah. That are, you know, yeah. Yeah, the ones, this very small blue bump that I was showing uh, in, the, in the kinematic space, yeah. It's, it's uh, just a work in progress, but yeah, of course the kinematics will play an important role on that, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. <laughs> uh, this one, yeah. Oh no, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, th this is uh, basically a, a problem in the, in the sampling that they are using and in the models they are using. Uh, you can trust on the star formation history basically uh, at about, fr from about uh, this uh, eight uh, giga years ago. What's the basic problem? The basic problem for the model, no, the, the model is basically only for the thin disk stars. So you cannot trust on what's happening here because there was no, no thin disk there. It's only for the thin disk stars. They are cutting for the thin disk stars. We have not found the correlation with the, any of the, the, the measures that are very well known. So we, we have not found the correlation with the, uh, these ones, with, not, with Sagittarius or, well, Sagittarius maybe can be compatible with the last one, but I am not uh, completely sure. But this, this result was fro for the last month, so we have not do, done a lot of research on it. So maybe, maybe this one can be related with the Sagittarius, some of the Sagittarius passages, it's possible.
but we have to do, it's basically work in progress, so yes, all these things we, we have to do a lot more research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the current day, you, you, you mean? This is about one solar mass per year. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is that probably we are just starting the, the, the quenching of the Milky Way now, yes. You, you have to look toward the, the overall curve. But yes, at the, at the current day, it is not as low as a quenched galaxy. Yeah, this was the formation probably of the sign also, yes. yes. <laughs> it's a uh, star. Yes. Yeah, the point is that if you look at the previous scenario before the peak, um, we suspect, we, we are still uh, doing some, uh, making some models, but we suspect that basically the gas was consumed before, so you need a replenishment of the gas in the disk of the Milky Way to generate the, the, this uh, very big uh, peak of star formation. Because uh, before it was mostly consumed by the previous measure. So the idea is that you really need uh, uh, an infall of new fresh gas. Also, you can see that also in the, in the chemistry space. You see that the, the disk, when you go to the, the chemistry space, uh, let me go back, you can see that the thin disk has a very wide range of uh, metallicities, and some of them are basically uh, just less metallic than the thick disk. So somehow you need some fresh gas, low metallicity to come, to mix with uh, maybe current uh, enhanced gas that you have in the halo and in the disk, and start generating new, new stars, but in a wide range of metallicities. So you really need new fresh gas with low metallicity to replenish the disk and to generate this distribution of metallicities. So yes, there is a measure. Zero, zero. Oh? The sun is zero, zero. Yeah, the sun is zero, zero. Yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> Yep. in the discussion again. So Santi, thank you very thank much you. for your presentation. <laughs> we are